Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Memphis Tigers men's basketball coach Josh Pastner. The Memphis Tigers basketball season came to an end last Sunday when the Tigers fell to UConn in the finals of the American Conference Tournament. And for a second straight year, Josh Pastner and his squad are on the outside looking in when it comes to postseason play. And since the Tigers finale, the last week has been interesting to say the least. First, it was a press conference where Josh reaffirmed he was and will continue to be the Tigers head coach, unless told otherwise. There was a subsequent email from school president Dr. M. David Rudd, who asked fans to be patient while a comprehensive evaluation of the program took place involving University of Memphis and community leaders. Then there was the departure of Tigers assistant coach Damon Stoudemire, who accepted the head coaching job at Pacific, the first for Damon. Now, Pastner has a guaranteed contract worth $2.65 million per year over a four-year period, which puts the school in a financial bind if they were to make a change. However, for as much displeasure coming from the fan base and a possible difference of opinion within the administration, Pastner appears to have the backing of the deep-pocketed boosters. Today, the much maligned head coach of the Memphis Tigers, Josh Pastner, joins me to address all the issues from his future to the future of the program. And it's next on Sports Files. Josh, good to have you on the show again. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate you having me. Thanks so much. All right, a lot of news this week. Obviously, the season wrapping up last Sunday. Let's start with the loss of one of your assistant coaches, Damon Stoudemire. You knew it was only a matter of time. He gets the Pacific job, so you're going to have to fill a hole. Yeah, I'm really happy for Damon. He got the uh, head job uh, at Pacific University, which is uh, in Stockton, California. They're in the West Coast Conference. Um, this is my fifth guy that's worked for me that's gotten a head job, uh, dating back to Willis Wilson, um, Jack Murphy, uh, Jason Gardner, Damon Stoudemire, and Luke Walton. You're too young to have a little tree going. So but you have in a tree seven going. years, I have five guys that worked for me to be head, running their own you know, programs. And, and for Luke, who was the head coach for uh, uh, the Warriors there for, for a stint, obviously he's going to be head coach next year in the NBA. Um, he's going to have his pick of, the, pick of the litter with some of those teams with the openings. But um, I'm really happy for those guys. And I want my assistant coaches to be head coaches. That's important to me. And um, um, so we continue to hire good people. And, and when you hire good people, there's an opportunity to lose people as well, too. All right, let's, let's talk about your situation. And you came out on Monday, a day after you lost in the championship game to Connecticut in the American tournament in Orlando. And hey, you were moving forward. Obviously, you still are getting ready for more recruiting, trying yep. to fill up the fill the holes that you're going to lose, and you're going to lose quite a few players. But then Dr. Rudd, the president of the University of Memphis, comes out with a statement, um, social. Everybody saw it that they will do a thorough examination of the program of the men's basketball program, and um, and then I guess once they're through the evaluation, you know, we'll come to their conclusion. What did you think again? Monday, you, you met the media. I was there. You're the head coach. You still are, but then you have this now thorough evaluation. I, I, well, a couple on. of things. I'm the head coach at Memphis. I'm recruiting, you know, uh, we're recruiting like crazy. Uh, we're focused on, on recruiting to, uh, to get great guys. we got two guys we signed, but we need to sign other guys. And, and at this time of the year, there's a lot of other programs that need to sign other guys. So you're battling, you're, you're scrapping, you're fighting on, on trying to get the best players coming in. Of course, we'll go through the graduate transfer market as well, too, is – as that becomes more available and who's, gra who's graduating and transferring, we'll be looking at the junior college kids and also some available high school kids as well, too. Um, and, and look, every year since I've been here, we've, we've reviewed the program comprehensively. I mean, I, and I've been involved in it. I mean, you're, 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 um, uh, that's part of your looking at the program. I've looked at it myself comprehensively for seven years after every year. And, and I've done that with my athletic directors 
and presidents. Some have been more involved, some, some haven't. Um, um, but that's just a normal part of the lay of the land. So, um, and that's just part of it. And so, um, you know, that's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very normal thing. And I don't think there's anything to read into it. Uh, other than I'm the head coach at Memphis and I'm recruiting and, and, and we're gearing up for next season and we need to get back to that NC2A tournament. That is so important to me, to us, to the community. we got to get back to that NC2A tournament. So that's our entire focus. That's where our mindset is. And it starts with the way uh, we are recruiting right now to get the players that we need to get. But no doubt has crept into your head Zero, there, that you won't I'm be the, the coach I'm next I'm the coach season. at University of Memphis my entire focus right now is to get ourselves back to the NC2A tournament. Um, no one is more disappointed than myself for not being back to the NC2A tournament this year. Obviously there were some uncontrollables that I, you know, uh, that I couldn't control. Sure. Uh, injuries and a transfer very late um, that was out of my control. But, uh, um, but I also know that um, the whole focus and what we're looking forward to right now is how do we get back to the NC2A tournament? That is goal number one, issue number one. Whatever we need to do, we need to get back to the NC2A tournament. That is goal number one. That's the ultimate. You always say that, that winning cures a lot of ills. Absolutely. But you have a fan base that understandably was, was not happy, and you weren't happy as well, but a fan base that at times were nasty and negative. How do you deal with that knowing that it's still out there until you guys go out there and win at the level they want to win at and the level you want to win at? Well, the, the fans' level that wants to win is the same level that I want to win at. So we're, we're, we're connected on that. I mean, I understand it. Um, uh, I wish the season started tomorrow, that we could start right again and get right back into it. But it's, um, uh, I understand the, the, the frustration. I'm, there's no more frustrated or disappointed uh, us not being in the NC2A tournament than, than myself. Mm -hmm. And so our entire focus, my entire focus, my entire vision is what do we need to do to get back to that NC2A tournament? And that's our entire, and that's examining, and that's part of the comprehensive review is just, is which includes me now, to, to look at, um, uh, that I'm involved in looking at what do we need to do to, be, to get better to take that next step to get back to the NC2A tournament um, as in terms of, of just every little thing that you can imagine. And so we, we will examine that, but First order of business is we got to get more more guys in here talent wise, and um, um, and our focus is to get back to the NCAA tournament. That's my focus. I will. I am waking up every day with that goal in mind, and nothing's changing on that. How taxing has this been, especially this last year, but really the last couple of years? Starting to see a little gray around the temples. Not like me, but it's had to take its toll on, on you and the family to a certain extent, right? Well, I mean, look, this is a very, this is probably the most intense job, or I would say this is one of the three most intense jobs in, in all of college basketball. Wow. And uh, and especially when you're following Coach Calipari, and mm -hmm. um, and and I'm in the first Memphis coach that's had to deal through social media and the amount of um, um, radio people that are that maybe have dual existence of both writing and radio, and there's more radio stations now or more coverage now than it's ever been before, and um, so that's all part of it. Um, so, um, uh, of course, who, who wants to be criticized? Nobody likes to be criticized. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I'm a real positive guy. However, all that being said, I get it. It's part of the job. And, and the disappointment that fans have, I understand because I'm just as disappointed. I mean, we're aligned at where we want to get, where we want to, get to, but it's on my responsibility to get us there. And um, I'm going to fight, scrap, claw, kick, punch, whatever needs to do so we get our butts back to that NC2A tournament because that is so important for this program, for me, for the city, for the university, for my bosses, we got to get back to that NC2A tournament, and that's the goal. How can you do that, which is obviously the goal, when you lose Shaq Goodwin, Ricky Tarrant Jr., you lose, possibly, you lose another senior in Trisan Varel. And Kedron po Johnson. Kedron Johnson. Possibly, Diedrich Lawson will test the waters. We don't know about the graduate guys, Avery Woods and Jake McDowell, who will both graduate and could transfer. You have two signed players right now. So how can you tell folks it will be better next year? Well, it's going to be better. And, and, and you're right. We lose four seniors. Um, you know, Diedrich Lawson is going to test the waters and put his name in and, and, and get the feedback per the new rule at the NC2A and the NBA allow him to do that. He can work out with teams, go to a combine, get the feedback and then decide if, if he wants to come back. I think... Him playing with his brother is going to be a big thing. Obviously, his brother being injured this year, he didn't get to really play with his brother other than just a few games. So um, him playing with his brother is going to be a big thing. And if he's not, I don't think if he's a surefire first round, and I don't know yet what, what, the, what it comes back from the feedback, 
um, that might make a difference in whether he stays or goes. And uh, uh, I know it's important for him. I mean, we have a great relationship, and he and and I felt we did a good job with him developing him and how he improved from the beginning to the end. But I like our core group. And if we lose a guy or two on a graduate transfer, that that could happen as well too. We're but. We're going to recruit guys. We're going to have a very good team. We got a very good core, and um, um, that we have no option but to get to that NC2A tournament next year. I realize that. So does everybody else. So um, we're not going to let anything happen other than get to that NC2A tournament. You said some things earlier this week in your press conference that may have gotten taken out of context. I think I know exactly where you were going, but it caused a stir with especially the students, or let's say the lack thereof. Uh, can you address that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, listen, I, that, that the timing of it wasn't wasn't good, and I, and, I, and I and I repeated what I said on Twitter that, um, you know, obviously I was I, I should have made those comments at the time, and and we are so grateful and thankful for the students that do come. We are so grateful and thankful for the students that do come, um, and I, I was just saying that you know we we need more students to come, and and but I also understand, and 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 again, my my comments were taken a little bit out of context. I don't know what the big deal was, um, but. Um, uh, I also understand, and you might not even know this, or if it, people don't even know this, that out of our 20-some-odd thousand students, 8,000 are between 18 to 22. Um, everyone else is, you know, older, and uh, they families, or they are a husband or wife, and a father or mother, or grandparent, you know, and, and, and they have a, and they have jobs, maybe having two jobs at a time. So it's not always easy for them to come to the games. But um, so I, 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 my comments were totally taken out of context. And, um, um, and, and again, for the students that show up, I, we are so grateful and thankful for them. And, and, and I also, I, I do recognize it's not an on-campus arena. And I do recognize, like I said, with the numbers of our students that uh, the majority of them have lives outside of school. And, um, and so whether it's jobs or families, and it's not always easy to come to games off campus as well. You have four years remaining on your contract with the University of Memphis. I, I've heard coaches in the past that said, listen, if somebody calls, I'm going to at least listen. Can you explain your situation if there would be another school that would call and, and be interested in you? All I, all I can tell you right now is my focus is on the head coach at Memphis. And, um, you know, um, um, you know I've, got a, I've got a great job here. Uh, it's an intense job. And uh, obviously I've not been happy with, uh, um, you know, us not making the tournament this year. And, um, uh, and, and my frustration, as I mentioned earlier here in this interview, that my frustration is the same with the fans. we got to get back to the NCAA tournament. So... All that other stuff to me doesn't is irrelevant right now. My entire focus is how do we get back to the NCAA tournament. That's part of us looking at every little thing and, and, and the improvements we can make so we can get back to the NCAA tournament. I go back again to the, the press conference on Monday. We were asked about scheduling. And, I, and this is something I actually disagree with you a little bit. Winning, I agree, cures a lot of ills. A lot of people come out if you've got a winning program. But if you're struggling a little bit and... You're not winning as much as you want. People come out to see a good opponent. You have some in the conference. You've had some certainly non-conference. Oklahoma was here this past season, which certainly is a good opponent. But will we see differences in the scheduling? Will there be uh, bigger I, names I, that come I, in the FedEx Forum? But, 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 but we do. I mean, you have UConn coming. Our league is different. Well, out, but, outside the league. But, but you have UConn coming in. You have Temple coming in. You've got... You know, you got Tulsa coming in, you've got SMU coming in, Cincinnati coming in. You know, when we were in Conference USA, you didn't have that. I mean, we would sometimes just get two names. If I if I told you when we were in Conference USA, hey, we're going to bring in Cincinnati and UConn, right. people would go, what a great schedule. Right. So, so, you know, let's not forget that. And that's just... That's that's part of it. We have a we have a very good schedule because of conference play. So um, look, I, I I truly believe you win and you win, um, and we win more than we have in these like than last year. People are going to come and 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 see the Tigers play. And the other thing is Vedrick's back. I think it's an exciting. You have a, you have a star right there, and um, and people are going to want to see that star as well too. Josh, when some people point fingers and say, listen, why does he seem to be deflecting the issues? He's, he's some of the problem, if not a lot of the problem, but he points fingers at other things. How do you react to that? You tell me. Have I ever pointed a finger at anybody? No, but they're talking about if you'd say, well, if we had these players or if this guy didn't get hurt, making excuses. I don't make excuses. I speak the truth. Those, those are, those, that's the truth. That's, that's the truth. I've, I've never deflected blame. I, I take responsibility. I'm the head coach. I'm responsible. If things don't go well, I'm, I'm held accountable. And, and, and I look at myself harder than anybody looks at, at, at anybody else. So, right, right. so I've never ducked anybody. I, and, and so when I talk about an injury here or transfer there, you, it's the truth. It's not, it's not an excuse. It's the truth. And you know what? How many people could, what programs would say, hey, you lose your three starters, 
one of them being a, an All-American, mm -hmm. one of them being a 23-year-old fifth-year senior, and one of them being your second-best recruit, you know, uh, and the, you plan on those three guys being your starting lineup. Not a lot of programs would have finished with 19 wins losing those three guys. You want 70% of your games here. Yep. People will say, well, you didn't win enough big games or enough tournament games. You've been in the tournament. You haven't the last two years, but you've been there four times. So four times? Four times. Are the expectations too high? No, I, I appreciate where the where the standard is set, um, and I understand where what the fan base wants. Um, obviously, I'm not you know, no one wants it more than than me. I promise yeah. you that. I mean, I want to win a national championship for the city worse than anybody. I promise you, um, and I, I do believe it's you know in, in in time it can happen. We just got to first get back to that tournament because once you get in the tournament, and you get to that Sweet 16. Um, which I haven't done yet, and I recognize that. But once you get to that second weekend, it's it's a crapshoot. Anything can happen. But also part of the seeding too. I mean, you look at our seeding from our league, even for 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 this year. I mean, you know, it's not great seeding, and so um, uh, that's part of it. So look, you got to catch a break. You know that, Greg, and, and and you get a ball bounce your way, or a whistle goes your way, or or a draw goes your way in in in, in the NC Toy tournament. But our first order of business, Greg, is we got to get back to the NC Toy tournament. Um, and and I understand what the expectations and standards are here, and, and we're gonna we're we're gonna fight scrap claw to meet those standards and expectations next season. Thirty seconds, look into that camera and tell all your fans out there, tell all the Tiger faithful again that they're in good hands. We're in a good position, yeah. and we're moving forward. Well, no, we are, we are in great hands, Greg, and and uh, we're gonna we have a lot to look forward to. I love our core group. Um, we're gonna make necessary changes that we need to make to improve. Uh, we're not gonna stand still. We're gonna go out and recruit. And uh, we're going to fight and, and scrap, and we're going to find a way to get to that NC Toy tournament. We have no option. We're going to get to that NC Toy tournament next year, and, and that's the entire focus. Josh, thank you so much okay. for your time. Thanks, Always Frank. appreciate, appreciate it. it. That's Tigers head coach Josh Pastner. Overtime is coming up next. So who out there has ever heard of the sport foot golf? Well, don't feel bad. Until recently, I hadn't either. But that all changed several months ago when I discovered the sport was coming to Memphis. Now, it's becoming a very popular recreational activity. It combines the athleticism of soccer with the skill of golf, and it makes for a fun day outside in the elements. The Memphis Football Golf Club was created by several Memphians, among them Alex Rasmussen, who I had a chance to not only chat with, but to play a few holes with as well. Well, Alex, thanks for having us out. Yeah, thanks for coming, Greg. Pleasure to meet you. Let me first start with this. Where did the idea for this come from? Yeah, well, we we learned about foot golf online, a bunch of soccer players here in town, and we were we were dying to get out there and try it. So we found a local city course that had a foot golf a foot golf course, and we went and tried it out and played it. And we actually uh, we thought we were pretty good. Well, you know, it was like 12 and 10 under the first time we went out there. So we were thinking, hey, we're the best foot golfers in the world. <laughs> well, you know, little little did we know there there were some guys that could really play, and there were some courses that were set up much longer than what we were used to. So the first time we went and competed for the national championship in Chicago, uh, in Back in September, we realized, hey, we, we if we're gonna play this at a serious level, we got to have our own course, and so here we are. All right, how long has the sport been around? Yeah, so early to uh, early to mid two thousands is where the, the sport sort of started to formulate over in Europe. The Netherlands is the first place it's, it's been tied to. Mm. Picked up in Argentina and South America, and then was brought to the United States in two thousand and eleven. All right, let's talk about obviously it's combining soccer and golf. People love to play golf. They love to play soccer. Why, why combine the two? Well, you know, golf has got such a high barrier of entry, but you know, one of the things that men love about the golf course is the serenity, the peacefulness of the mm -hmm. golf course, just getting out and enjoying that fresh open air. Well, this takes away the barrier of entry. You don't need golf clubs. You don't need lessons. You don't need four hours to play. You need a soccer ball and a leg. So very inexpensive. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it still gives you the, the beauty and the serenity of a golf course and that environment that we all love. I think it's a great point. You also get your exercise. We're in golf. A lot of times you don't get the exercise. So the concept, is it exactly like golf? It is. Rules wise, it's exactly like golf. You just play it with your leg instead of a club and a soccer ball instead of golf balls. But rules wise, almost exactly the same. We're here at the old Cordova Country Club. People probably remember they played golf here, I'm sure, one time or another. How did you 
get associated with the people that own this land to be able to create these 18 holes that you have? Well, when we started searching for a place to, to put our foot golf club, the first place I thought about was, was Cordova Country Club. Mm -hmm. I had remembered last March that they had shut down and closed the course permanently. Um, and that's actually a, was a perfect place for us to kind of have a clean start and something that we could we could kind of uh, build up ourselves. So we called them and, and pitched the idea, idea to the owners of the Cordova Country Club or, or this parcel of land here that our foot golf course is on. Uh, and they love the idea and they bought into it with us. So here we are. You just recently opened up. How do you get the word out? Well, we're doing a lot of online marketing, Facebook marketing, of course, you know, great shows like yours to help spread the word in the community. We're targeting soccer players right now. We're reaching out to all the local soccer clubs and soccer players online and Facebook marketing. Uh, of course, we've got a website, memphisfg.com. Okay. That's memphisfg.com. Uh, so if you Googled Memphis foot golf or anything associated with that, of course, you'd find us there. Uh, but hopefully we're going to do some traditional PR and spread the word that way and keep the online marketing going. And, and, and gra guerrilla and grassroots wise, we're going to target soccer clubs, soccer teams, high school soccer teams, and try to get them to use this as, a, as an off-season training ground and compete against each other in a different way. Alex, you were talking about targeting soccer players, but how about families coming out for recreation? Is it good for just a, a family to come out and, and play? It's perfect, absolutely. We actually, this morning, uh, we had some spring breakers out here with their family and, and moms playing. And again, go back, going back to the barrier of entry, the great exercise, it's about a four mile walk to play the entire course. Um, and But we've got it, we're split up too, where you can make it a two mile walk or just play three or four or five holes and play a nice little loop back to here. So we bring our kids out all the time. Our, I have a three, two, one year old and a 14 year old. Wow. They all love it out here. They all, they, they they love the golf course and it's perfect for families. I would imagine that all you need is the proper apparel, proper shoes, and, and a soccer ball that you have to bring? Absolutely. We can rent you a soccer ball if you, if you Oh, you can? Us okay. No, we can get you a soccer ball. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a soccer ball at home, that's the perfect way to do it. What is the, the goal for you guys? You know, I think the goal ultimately is to, to rejuvenate this golf course in this area, to introduce this sport. Uh, but really, we want to draw out younger kids, and we want to draw out families, and we want to help grow this sport from a grassroots level. Uh, you know, you, you have the tournaments and the big, you know, professional players trying to play competitively, but we want to take the other aspect of that and try to get younger kids involved. It's the perfect off-season sport for soccer players. It's the perfect activity for families to get out and play. And so we would just want to grow the sport at the most grassroots level possible. So that's our goal here. And there's also a connection with the PGA Tour, correct? Absolutely. So the PGA has actually certified the AFGL as as the uh, as the foot golf entity uh, in the United States, and we are accredited by the AFGL. We're AFGL Foot Golf Course, um, and and that's actually very exciting that golf has bought into foot golf as a way to bring people out to golf courses and an extended uh, uh, revenue source for golf courses as well. You talked about here, and your guys' goals is to make it recreational for everybody to come out and join themselves and and get some uh, some great exercise but do you see down the road maybe having leagues and and how competitive can it get at, at maybe one point yeah that obviously the guys at the at the higher level we would love to compete uh, with people in the area so again that's where targeting those soccer players uh college soccer players and you know maybe they played club soccer growing up and right now they play men's league uh to get out here and play the sport because we do want to compete at the top levels so we have set this course up with championship to uh for championship tees so that you can come out here and, and be able to compete at a championship level when you go up and play in the national tournaments or even the World Cup. And then again, I would imagine a lot less Achilles injuries, knee injuries, shoulder injuries, concussions from hitting soccer balls off their head, right? That's Everything's right. pretty good as that's far right. as that's concerned. Yeah, you get the tight hamstring or, or you know, <laughs> groin every once in a while, but for the most part, uh, you stay injury free. Do a little stretching before you, before you come out here. Uh, there are, though, leagues around the country, right? We talked about this uh, before we started taping here that this, this started around the world and came to the United States, but now the United States is becoming a, a big part of it uh, from a world standpoint where they are in foot golf. Yeah, it's actually unbelievable. The United States just went to Argentina and won the team competition of the wow. World Cup. And, and that was a, a bigger credit to the leagues that have mm -hmm. been playing already here in the United States and stretching out these courses and making them long. Um, so that we could, uh, so that we can go and compete at the best levels. Uh, so, every, like everything else in the United States, they've started on the coast. The West Coast is huge, California, and the East Coast, both uh, uh, Florida and New Jersey, both have uh, a big kind of league areas right there. And you know, like everything else, it eventually comes to the heartland, and we we make the best out of it. Well, you guys have done a great job. I'm looking forward to coming out here and playing, Alex. Thank you so much thank for your you, time. Greg, absolutely appreciate it. And to find out more about Memphis Foot Golf, check out their website at memphisfg.com. 
The Memphis Tigers football team hits the field Tuesday for their first of 15 spring practices, the first spring camp under first year head coach Mike Norvell. The Tigers will hold a scrimmage in Nashville April 9th, and the spring game is set for Friday night, April 22nd at Liberty Bowl Stadium. And that'll do it for now. Have a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.